in person, just down the road from the Lakers front offices here in El Segundo, California, the controlling owner and CEO of the Los Angeles Lakers, Jeannie Buss. Good to see you, Jeannie. Good morning. Anything going on with you lately? <laughs> Anything going on with the Lakers lately? Uh, well, tonight is uh, Laker night at Dodger Stadium. Okay. So I'm going to be at Dodger Stadium tonight. Okay. Yeah. So... Does what? Magic hook you up with those seats? Is that how that works? <laughs> yes, or? Magic has some good contacts. What is there. Laker Night at Dodger Stadium? What is um, it looking it's like? It's actually we're going to, um, you know, present some jerseys to some of the Dodger players that okay. might have the number twenty-three on them. May or may not. Right. Okay. Spoiler alert. <laughs> right. Okay. So, um, you know, it just it's we we find that our fan base is really crossover. That we're very we have. You know, people who love the Dodgers usually are Laker fans, too. Yeah, vice versa. Right. Los Lakers, Los Doyers here in Los Angeles. <laughs> right. Sure. Um, so let's start, I guess, with uh, obviously LeBron. I mean, it, it's a huge free agent signing, to <laughs> say the least. What would your dad think of this right now, Jeannie? You know, I it, it felt... Um, you know, very like a familiar feeling that when we got Shaquille O'Neal as a free agent um, in 1996, it, it, it kind of felt the same way, which that is the formula, kind of the 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 way Dr. Buss liked to do things is to go after the best mm -hmm. and, you know, put together the best team he can to play and represent the Lakers. Right. And so it feels shades of 96 right now. To yeah. You? I mean, it, 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 you know, the idea that, um, you know, LeBron chose to come to the Lakers, that he, he knows what we're building. He knows the, the roster that we have. He knows we have a lot of young players, um, you know, that he wanted to be a part of what we're doing shows, you know, it, it validates the work that Magic Johnson and Rob Palinka have done um, to kind of, you know, turn the tide um, for the team because we hadn't made the playoffs in, in five years. And we're hoping that that um, adding, you know, a player like LeBron and 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 the veterans that we've um, added, like um, Lance Stevenson and Rajon Rondo and JaVale McGee and Michael Beasley, that, you know, we'll have the, the nice combination that we will get the Lakers back into contention. So well, let's let's talk about um, the LeBron um, nuts and bolts of the acquisition here. Okay. Jeannie Buss here on the Rich Eisen Show. So as the word uh, is has been mentioned, magic rings the doorbell of one... <laughs> LeBron James yes. here on the west side of Los Angeles right. at 9 Pacific, midnight Eastern, when it was first allowed for him to ring the doorbell That's in question. Right. That's right. Um, where were you at that moment? I was at home um, kind of watching things, um, you know, unfold with, you know, um, some of the other free agent signings that were were taking place that night and um certainly i was anxious to see how things went with magic but did you I, know he was going over to his house yes i did know he was going over there i i i knew they were meeting i actually didn't know where it was going to be interesting and so um you know i would expect um you know some kind of feedback and we really didn't know um you know they they had a good meeting a productive meeting um i think when you have two players that have so much in common in terms of their, you know, they played in the Midwest, um, that they, you know, both have won championships and they're both about making their teams better, um, that they had a lot in common and they, they had a good conversation, but really, um, you know, no decision was made at that time. And I was just hoping that things would go our, our, our way. But there was really no deadline as to when he would decide. Are and you texting Magic during this? Like, say, hey, how's it going? <laughs> no. or, or are you just sitting back? And I know, I know you 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 can't have a better emissary, right? And you are delegating at, in your role as controlling owner. But I mean, are you? Well, I'm empowering. I wasn't okay. delegating. I okay. was empowering. Okay. Like I I I have complete faith in Magic Johnson in terms of his ability. Um, to be a leader, to know how to put together a winner. And, um, you know, I have patience. And, and I think what he's done has exceeded my expectations, how quickly they've kind of turned around the roster. I think Rob Palenka has done a great job, uh, you know, um, handling the, 
you know, the salary cap is is really important. I hate mm -hmm. talking about things. It sounds so, um, you know, just about the, the slotting and, and the cap space and all that. It just sounds so Im impersonal. But Rob Plinka has a great grasp on that. And together they knew what they wanted. And um, certainly LeBron um, is a, a, a person who um, has earned his free agency. He's been a free agent a, a couple times in his career. And, um, you know, he was going to make a decision that was going to be best for him. Um, whatever that criteria was for him. And I'm just glad that everything worked out so that he he chose our team to come sure. to Sure, Jeannie Buss here on the Rich Eisen Show. So when did you insert yourself into the process? Um, you yeah. know, I... <laughs> if at all? And, did you not? I didn't uh, have to. You I didn't, didn't send like an assortment over to his house, a note from uh, that to hand him from... I, th I think what what... I think what people have to see is what you know, since um, I made the decision to change the the front office of our basketball operations 18 months ago, or not even 18 months ago, that every decision that was made, bringing in Magic, Magic hiring Rob Palenka, um, you know, the the players that they've drafted, the the way they develop players in our with our G League team, every decision that they made shows a path to where they're going. Um, for a while, it was difficult for me to see what Laker basketball was because we were changing coaches every 18 months. And you can't create an identity. There, there seemed to be a lack of stability in terms of you know, where our eventual goal would be. And, and when Magic came in, that kind of settled down and, and you could begin to see what kind of personality the Laker team was going to have, what Laker basketball stands for. And so, you know, drafting players like Kyle Kuzma and Josh Hart and Lonzo Ball um, and the, the continued development of Brandon Ingram, you can see what Laker basketball stands for. Coach Luke Walton has done a great job getting everybody to buy in to what his vision is. And so now we have an identity. And I think when you're a free agent, because it's very difficult for a player to get to that point in their career where they have the opportunity to choose where they want to go. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so for free agents to see that we, you know, that we are cohesive, that we're that we're building something so that when they entrust their choice, their career to us, that they know they're not going to be shortchanged. So the night that Magic talked to LeBron, mm -hmm. you didn't know where the meeting was taking place. Mm -hmm. You got a, what, a text when he left saying, I think we're looking good? I mean, yeah, what do you say? that basically had a great conversation and, you know, we'll see what happens. And then were you surprised that the jury came back so quickly? Um, I was I was relieved that it came back so quickly. And, you know, I found out pretty much like how everybody else did by a text on my phone from uh, Rich Paul, um, LeBron's agent, just saying congratulations. And, um, you know, I get chills when I think about it now, actually, um, you know, and, and what that means. And, and it, I got choked up. Um, I thought about um, what that would have meant to Dr. Bus uh, and. Um, you know, just and and also to the fans who've been so patient with us um, because we hadn't delivered a product, you know, that was, you know, consistent with the product that we'd been delivering for 30 years, over 30 years. So, um, you know, I, I just I felt um, honored and validated for all the the uh, changes that we made and the direction that we're taking the so, team. So when was the first time you conversed with LeBron um, on this subject, Jimmy Buss? I, you know, I really haven't. I've only had one conversation with him, and it was brief because um, he was uh, at our facility working out, and um, he didn't have a shirt on, and I felt a little <laughs> bit a little bit nervous okay. standing there okay. talking to somebody, um, sweating, and, you know, kind of in the middle of his workout. But I just wanted him to know how much I appreciated that he made the decision to join us. Well, I also noticed that you were one of the many that uh, was tweeting or responding about uh, his school and some of the comments that were made um, from uh, Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. on that subject. Mm -hmm. I mean... Is that something that uh, 
you know, I'm I, wondering where. Obviously, you 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 now have a a, um, a relationship with LeBron in mm -hmm. this regard. Why well, did you do that? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, just because I haven't had a chance to talk to him one on one doesn't mean that I haven't watched and appreciated the the choices that he's made, what he's decided to stand up for, what he's decided to invest in. I think he's he is proven to be a leader amongst his peers. He is, um, you know, making a decision to to change lives and to invest in the young people uh, in his community uh, where he grew up, where he knows he can make a change. And he knows that, um, you know, by investing dollars and in, and in showing that leadership that it will encourage others his peers to to do likewise so so much conversation has been made since this signing as to what would be the measuring stick for lebron james's success here <laughs> in los angeles for this franchise that folks just just the photograph that we posted of you on our twitter account promoting that you were here i lost track of the number of larry o'brien championship trophies that are behind <laughs> you in this photograph what is your from the top of the flowchart management measuring stick of what success would look like for LeBron James here in Los Angeles? Um, well, I think for an organization, for the Laker organization, we are, are not going to rest until we're proud. And, you know, there has been so much, you know, magic has brought championships and, and pride to the team as a player. And I expect the same from him as, you know, the face of our franchise. So... Well, we, we want to win. Okay. That's what I'm saying. You want to. So, does does a trophy need to be added to you behind that photograph for this to be a measuring stick for success? For it's him? so difficult to win a championship. I mean, everything has to align the right way. You have to to you know avoid injuries. Um, everything has to just come together, and it's so rare. It's like lightning striking. Um, but but what in my position as the 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 owner as the controlling owner is to to make sure that we have all the pieces in place so that we can be contenders that we can be part of the conversation and that's what we've missed the last 5 years is that you can't you you can't have a a chance a path a journey to a championship if you're not even in the playoffs I want to take a break, uh, Jeannie Buss, uh, with you. When we come back, I do want to hit on something that I'm scratching my head over, is that the diehard Kobe fans in this town appear to have an issue a little bit with LeBron coming to this team. And uh, I do want to hit on that subject and a little bit more with you here on the show, okay? Jeannie Buss is here on the Rich Eisen Show. We are back with the controlling owner and CEO of the Los Angeles Lakers in a moment. All right, while the radio audience is away, uh, Jeannie Buss, we noticed a couple of photographs uh, on your social media platforms. Mm -hmm. We wanted to get a little bit of a backstory. Okay. Um, <laughs> at Jeannie Buss on Twitter and also Instagram. Yes, thank okay. you. Okay, <laughs> uh, let's check this one out first. Uh, we noticed this flashback Friday. Yeah. Um, Did you have a speaking role in this? No, I didn't. I was just an extra, but, um, you know, Toby McGuire is a big uh, Lakers fan. Okay. And so he invited me to be... Um, you know, just an extra, but I, I love horse racing, Santa Anita. It's a beautiful track, okay. and uh, I think I miss my era. I sh I Very been, Elizabeth yeah. Banks look right there. <laughs> she was in that film as well in Sea Biscuit. All right, let's see. Let's roll with the next one right here. Uh, we got another photograph. Uh, at, at, okay, you're going to Springsteen in yes. a couple of weeks. You're a big Springsteen fan. Did he he opened Staples? Correct. Did he yes, he stages? did. Very yes. good. Very okay. good. That memory. Yes. Well, I mean, I'm did. from the New York, New, New New York area, so I mean, I have to know everything about Springsteen. Yeah, I actually, I think I'm going to give away those tickets because I don't have anybody to go with. What? And so I'm not going to make. Mike, the trip. do you want to go? You got, you got some, my two guys over <laughs> there. there. there I don't go. know. I offered them to some. I offered them to Jay Moore first. Okay. Because so, I know he's a big Springsteen. Okay. Fan. We'll see. So if it's not, then you got you got plus ones <laughs> right, over there. Right, right, right. I'm so interested. Okay. Not to make this uh, a little bit. Is it awkward for you, Chris? It I'll cancel be. my plan. Exactly. I, I okay. Plan uh, let's see what else we have over there. Can we run through them? Uh, there we go. All right. So now, when was this? Was this before they opened this? The stadium open? Uh, yeah. Well, um, was it was recent? last November, and okay. and I couldn't get over this that beautiful statue. 
it's really something to see in person. I have My, not seen it yet. Oh, you have to. It's a great selfie spot. Okay. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and then, uh, and then, uh, were you checking out any of your players in your fantasy league? I'm looking through here, and I don't oh, see any Falcons right there, but. I oh uh, no this is no last that's year's not your why. team last year correct <laughs> yeah okay I see I'm imagining Brown was your first draft choice right Antonio Brown yeah and then they just they put it in order yeah I know because like, I saw position. that I'm like she's drafting Blake Bortles first no no no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no no don't sound like Jalen no. Ramsey all of a sudden no. all right I do want to talk a little fantasy football with you as well okay. Jeannie Buss is here in the Rich Eisen show back with more in a moment. All right, back with Jeannie Buss, the uh, controlling owner of the Lakers and CEO, um, live on the Rich Eisen Show. When was the first time you met Magic? What's your first time you ever oh met Oh, my him? gosh. The first time I ever met Magic, um, you know, back in the day, the, the draft wasn't what it is today. Sure. It was they just called the players and said, oh, you've been drafted. So um, once Magic was drafted by the Lakers, they flew him out to L.A., mm -hmm. And uh, Bill Sharman, who was the general manager of the team, brought him over to my dad's house. And my dad said, you know, Jeannie, they're going to be coming over here. I got some stuff to do upstairs. Um, will you just bring them in, seat them in the living room and offer them something to drink? So, you know, I was 17 years old. Magic was 19. So the doorbell rings. I open it up and there's this smile of this guy that just you know, was so fun watching on TV and now I'm meeting him in person. So um, he came in, we sat down, he talked about how excited he was to be drafted to the Lakers, but that he was only going to stay three years until he could go home and play for the Pistons. And he told this to you. This is what he told me. In your house. <laughs> in my dad's house. Right, so I okay. ran upstairs. Okay. And, you know, I was panicked and I said, Dad, you're not going to believe what he just told me that that he's he wants to go home and play for his team back home. And my dad didn't miss a beat when he said first time he walks out on the floor at the forum, he's never going to leave. That's that, what he said. That's what my dad said. And he knew the love affair that he had brought somebody that the city would fall in love with. And, and Magic would fall in love with the city. And that's exactly what happened. And, um, you know, Magic's never left. <laughs> How often do you remind Magic of All this All the time. Story? You do? <laughs> yes. But that, that you know, it, it kind of made sense for who he was, you know, that he, you know, how, how much his hometown means to him. Well, I mean, he is, you know, Mr. Michigan State, even that's to right. this very day, that's right. you know. Yeah. Um, but he's Mr. Los Angeles uh, now, he potentially could. even more, obviously, you know, world renowned. Yeah. In that regard. Mm -hmm. So how did you ever sit back and go, wow, he I, I'm now the controlling owner of the Lakers mm -hmm. and the guy who I am putting in charge as as the person to make sure that we get all the trophies in the case is mm -hmm. Magic Johnson. Uh, you know, it's it's really how. Um you know, we were raised by the same man, basically Dr. Bus. Uh, you know, Magic coming to the team at 19. Um, you know, my dad had a lot of influence, and um, Magic was somebody who wanted to learn about the business side of the operation. And um, you know, it, it, it's it's so interesting working with him because we see things the same way because we were brought up under the same philosophy and it's just made um you know putting the lakers in this kind of position so easy because he and i both see what needs to be done and will continue to do until you know we, we've we've reached our goal which is to be to make la proud of this team well i think you, you're you're kind of already mission accomplished there uh <laughs> you know um with lebron james coming here you just feel it you just feel it walking around the town there's no question it's palpable sense of excitement um and i know um i don't want so and that kobe uh in particular is excited about this. Mm -hmm. Is it true that he texted you a Game of Thrones meme? <laughs> yes. <laughs> once that the signing took place. Yes. It, that is true. Yes, I mean, Kobe has been um, an inspiration for me. Um, he has been, he's given me his time, his wisdom. Um, you know, he's he's a very thoughtful his, his person. Agent. Yeah, his agent. <laughs> right. And he's, he's, a, he's a very strategic thinker. And I, you know, sometimes I, you know, get in 
get too caught up in the emotion of things. And so to have an influence like Kobe who could kind of lay things out in a way of, you know, what is the goal that you're trying to accomplish, Jeannie? Well, then here's how you have to look at it. You have to create a path. You have to, you know, and, and you know, do you have the heart to do that? Do you have, do you have what it takes to, to, you know, make things the way you want them to be? Because that sometimes takes, you know, bravery and guts and courage. And I think that, um, you know, that conversation really inspired me. And I think that's where, why he sent me that Game of Thrones meme. And because which is exactly, can you describe it, what it was? It just, you know, the, the character um, uh, that they call the mother of dragons. Khaleesi. Khaleesi. So the, he's, he thinks you're the Khaleesi of the Lakers? Well, he, that, that I had to, to learn to be that, that I had to, um, you know, take control and, and, and define what it was that I wanted to accomplish. And, um, and I wrote back to him when he sent that uh, to me, I said um, that you allowed me to see what I couldn't. And um, is this in terms of taking control of the yeah, team? Yeah, that from that he your knew. Brother? He Sorry. knew. Yeah, yes, that I that I would make tough decisions because it involves family, and and um, sometimes it's hard to make a business decision that um, you know is is you know family. It's it's just different, and um, you know he he you know, he was happy for me and he was happy to see because he knew I could do it. And he's, you know, a father of three daughters and he's v very much about empowering his his daughters. Well, and, and, and the situation that you set up for the team uh, and it, it paved the road for LeBron coming here. Mm -hmm. And there's so many people in this town that think that he's now want to talk about Game of Thrones, I guess, realm treading on on the turf, LeBron is treading on Kobe's turf here. Uh, where, where do you stand on this subject of treading on Kobe's turf with him coming here? Well, I think that anybody that would, you know, um, any Laker fan, like they're not Laker fans if they're not happy about Le LeBron joining the team. So, um, you know, there was some unrest and some uneasiness. And I just think those are troublemakers that, that, um, you know, they they don't get it. I think um, Los Angeles is going to be very proud of the way that uh, LeBron will represent the Lakers team and they're going to fall in love with him, too. So what's more of a truthful rumor? Kobe's not happy about LeBron coming. No, that's not true. Or Kobe would be interested in coming out of retirement to play with LeBron. <laughs> I'm, I'm always constantly trying to get Kobe to get more involved. Um, he's got so many other projects that no, he's No, I know doing. he's got an Oscar in I the know, case, he's like but... so creative and he's got so many different things. He knows he knows how much I need him and how, how much his support means to me. He always has an open door to, to anything that he wants to do with the Lakers. Including coming back on the floor? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think his his wife Vanessa would kill me <laughs> if I said that, but okay. but you know I mean, like I said, Kobe Kobe can do anything in my book. All right, let's take a sixty second break. Come back. We have uh, a game called Start Bench Cut here, where we give you a choice of three. Okay. Where you got to start one, bench one, and cut one. There's some interesting aspects there, and I do want to hit a little bit on Lonzo Ball and his future with this team. Okay. That's in sixty seconds with Jeannie Buss back here on the Rich Eisen Show. <laughs> I don't know why people, you know, kind of, kind of just rule us out just because we're young. Like, like we're hungry, we're competitive. You know, anybody that watched us play last year, we were in a lot of games. Like, you know, adding one of the greatest players of all time, that's only going to, you know, raise what we do and you know, raise our level of focus to an even higher level. So I don't, I don't really see why they're so patient. <laughs> That's Kyle Kuzma, who burst on the scene last year for the Los Angeles Lakers and is one of the young Lakers that uh, are around with LeBron James coming here. Uh, Jeannie Buss here on the Rich Eisen Show. And I, when I say around, there was a lot of conversation that a lot of these young kids could be sent elsewhere uh, during the uh, free agency period to perhaps acquire uh, another player. How Was that possible? You know, it's I, again, I defer to our 
you know, our head of basketball, Magic Johnson, I can't tie his hands. He's got to do what he feels is best for the team. And I know his agenda is only to make the Lakers better and to win. And so I have to, I have complete faith in him that he will make decisions that will get us there. Was it close though? Were, was it close, a blockbuster trade close um, um, when LeBron was in the mix? I don't, I don't know what kind of conversations they had. They wouldn't, they wouldn't burden me with all that, for all the different things that go on on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but um, they know how I feel. I, I, how do you feel? Uh, well, I, you know, I love the players that we've drafted. Um, my youngest brother, Jesse Buss, runs our scouting department, and he has found us players, you know, like a Kyle Kuzma that uh, was a late first round pick, who now I think if the draft was held again, he'd be a top five pick. You know, finding players like Josh Hart, who, um, can come in and and contribute. Um, you know, I I I I love our youth. I love our young players, and I get attached, um, you know, very strongly to players. I would probably still have Shaquille O'Neal playing mm. if it was my choice. Mm. But um, you know, I I think that um, again, I trust Magic knows. Um, exactly what he's trying to build. And with Lonzo Ball, um, the fact that Rajon Rondo was acquired mm -hmm. has left a lot of people scratching their heads saying, is there a competition here? Is, does Lonzo have to play for his starting role on this team? Uh, you know, I think if you want to talk basketball stuff, maybe have Luke Walton here, or Rob Palenka. I, I, I can't, you know, I can't tell you what's going to happen. All I know is that uh, Rajon Rondo uh, was a strong contributor uh, to his team uh, last year, and we need a player like that. The consistency, the experience, um, the winning that he has behind him, I think is only going to help every player on our team. And uh, Luke Walton's future, where do you see it from your <laughs> I think Lucas is um, has an ability to connect with people like I've never seen. He's very um, he can disarm, you know, any group of people, any, um, uh, you know, I, I, people want to play for him. They want to please him. He's he's just a good people person. And, uh, you know, I I feel for him because we didn't give him the kind of talent that he needed to be successful. He chose to come here after being with Golden State uh, for their championship. Um, and, you know, a, a coach can only be as good as the players that he has um, b given on his roster. And I think Luke has shown what kind of basketball he wants to play. And I think he's he's developed our, our young players to the point where somebody like a LeBron James would want to come and play for him. So, uh, and again, I know you're very happy with your management team. What do you think of when you see Jerry West, though, with the Clippers? You know, um, Jerry is, um, you know, somebody who is – has proven his himself time and time and time again as a player, as a front office. Um, you know, he's a true professional. He was um, under contract w to another team when um, we made the when I made the changes to our basketball front office. And um, you know, I I wish him the best. He he knows what he's doing. The logo. The logo. He is that. Yes. What do you think of when you drive around town? You see all the the Warriors stuff um, you know, that you it, see around here. They're very I, popular, as you know. Yeah, you know, that's what happens is you capture a kid's imagination when they're, you know, seven, eight, nine years old. And the the Warriors have been everywhere. They've, they've won and they've done, you know, I have to hand it to them as an organization. They know how to put winning teams together. They keep improving. The addition of DeMarcus Cousins was, you know, great for them. And, um, you know, they're the competition. They set the bar. So, you know, we want to try to do what they've done. Are they good for the league? You think? Um, absolutely. I think any, any um, organization that goes after winning does what it takes. They're building, they're opening a new arena, um, not this season, but next season, that will, you know, set a new bar um, for um, this league and, and, that's what it's all about.
Jeannie Buss here on the Rich Eisen Show. Um, we do this with uh, many guests, so we're appreciative of you being here. Let's play Start, Bench, Cut. We're going to give you three choices. You have to start one, bench one, and cut okay. one here with Jeannie Buss. Here on the show. It's time. Start. Start now. Bench. Just sit down and be quiet. Or cut. Okay, here we go. Start, Bench, Cut with Jeannie Buss, the <laughs> controlling owner of the lake. Hey, you said anything's, uh, anything's game here. Okay, That's here right. we go. Uh, the owner in the NBA most likely to reach for the check at dinner. Okay, you've got to start one, bench one, and cut one. Okay. Paul Allen, owner of the Blazers. Mark Cuban, owner of the Dallas Mavericks. James Dolan, owner of the Knicks. Okay. You have to start one. Who's more likely to pick up a check at dinner? Um, uh, <laughs> Jim Dolan. He's he, bought me dinner many times. Really? Oh, yes. oh, you start the owner nice. of the Knicks. Yes. And wow. then, okay. And then I, I, I guess I would have to, to. You know, I would have to to bench, I guess, Mark Cuban and okay. then cut Paul Allen because Paul, he's never invited me to dinner. OK, so <laughs> Paul Allen's cut out. So only, Dolan's only bought, out of just because he's never we've so never had dinner. Dolan's bought you bought. many times. OK, is he's, that because he, he's, you know, he owns the forum now pretty much? Uh, no, no. Okay. He's, he and I are we're very good friends and okay. I'm a fan of his music. I know you are. Yes. He's good. <laughs> you are JD in the straight shot. Yes. Are you a fan? Yes, I've seen them a few times. They're great. Well, speaking oh, on behalf Paul, of Knicks please. Nation, we're we're we'd love for you to okay. whisper in James's ear about <laughs> a couple of things. Selling the team. That's the end of that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up. Uh, former Laker who would be best as a late-night talk show host. We're removing magic okay. from this because he's already done it. Kobe, Shaq, or Meta World Peace, who would be best at being a host of a late-night talk show? Start, bench, cut, Jeannie oh, Buss. Oh, wow. Ah, you make these really hard for me. Um, I would idea. I would have to start Kobe because I know Kobe would do deep dives into every guest that he had. Okay. Um, you know, I guess on the bench would be Shaq because he... He's so entertaining. I can watch Shaq do anything, anything. And, and laugh and have fun. And then I just, you know, I guess just by virtue of numbers, the, like, Meta, I'm sorry I have to cut you. <laughs> you disappointed me on Big Brother. I, you were my celebrity Big Brother choice. Did you see Shaq on Shark Week? Did you catch Oh, Shaq? my gosh. <laughs> he's just, he's, it, it's like I, you haven't lived until you've gone to a party where Shaq is the DJ because he can get a party just bouncing off the walls. He's so fun. It, I was on the stage with him at the Su Super, Super Bowl this year. And it was right? amazing. It's you, amazing, right? Yeah, he I was right next to him. Yeah, that, the nights were a little hazy. Yeah, I had to venture out. It was, he boy. DJed the all-star uh, celebrity game uh, for, for Major League Baseball in D.C. I ran into him in, in the lobby of a hotel. He's, he's, he's the best. Okay, yeah. here we go. A next uh, start bench cut for Jeannie Buss. Favorite ball, Lucille, LeVar, Basket. <laughs> Start bench cut. Oh. Lucille Lavar, basket favorite ball. Okay, I you know um, I'm gonna have to go with the the you know well I, it's a tie. It's this is hard. I'm this, not this, good at making these decisions. No, it's, come on, you're one no. of the top owners in professional sports. Well, I mean, it's it's got to be NBA because that's okay, what start, feed, feeds basket. us us all the okay. basketball world. Okay. And then, um, uh, you know, I would have to say... Um, You're going to bench Lucille or LeVar? I oh. guess I have to, to bench um, LeVar. <laughs> <laughs> Lucille Ball is caught! She's good because she doesn't play basketball. She's out! <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to deal with Lucille, basically, later on. Okay. What is your relationship with LeVar? Um, it's great. I, you know, all the parents and significant others, spouses of players that that come into our team, mm -hmm. you know, I, I like to connect with because that's family. Sure. And so, uh, you know, I've had great um, times with him. He's He loves his kids. I, I admire that. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had a conversation with his uh, with him about his propensity to say things into a microphone that might create a problem? No, I mean he's it's like he's he, his opinions are his own. They're not 
opinions of the organization. So he's he's a free person to do whatever and say whatever he wants. Okay, another start bench cut here. We got a little serious there. When, well, but that's what happens when you bench him over Lucille Ball. I take a little bit of umbrage to that. Uh, favorite Jack Nicholson movie? One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, The Shining, A Few Good Men. Um, the Shining. Because, I mean, there's a reason why Jack Nicholson's seat is next to the visiting bench. Because that <laughs> that character he played in The Shining, you never know if he's going to be that guy. And he's a little, he's like part of our home court advantage. Okay, so Jack Torrance is the reason why he's sitting there. They, that start, you. what do you bench and cut? Cuckoo's Nest and A Few Good oh, Men. Oh, okay. Um, Oh, Cuckoo's Nest is next, and then I guess I have to cut a few good minutes. Okay, I'm sorry, good. No, it's Jack. okay. Hey, I love everything what, you do. What's your favorite story, Jack story? You got one that you can tell? Um, you know, he's, I think, I mean, the most touching story for me was um, he wanted to come to Chick Hearn's memorial, that that was important to him, that he loved Chick Hearn. And, you know, you, you just don't think that Jack thinks that way, but... He does. He's, did, he, did he go? Did he show? Mm -hmm. It's really. You're getting a little emotional. Yeah, about it. I mean, I love I love Jack Nicholson. He's been such a part of our team. He's a big part of our team, and I will be happy to see him on opening night. Yeah, against the uh, Rockets. <laughs> right. After and uh, after a game in Portland. Right, and a, a Saturday night. We never open on a Saturday well, night. Well, you're gonna do that with LeBron at home. Last okay. one for you, uh, okay. number because you're a fantasy football player. Yeah. Uh, start bench cut. Uh, number one pick if you get the number one pick in fantasy football this year. Start bench cut. Who do you choose? Gurley, Bell, or David Johnson? Todd Gurley. Are you kidding me? Okay. Oh That's my a gosh. Start. You're Los I, Angeles first. I might actually win this year. No. Okay. okay. <laughs> nice. And then um, I guess. Yeah, Bell and or David Johnson. Who do you bench and or cut there? Um, I guess. <sighs> I guess I bench Bell and cut Johnson. I'm okay. So sorry. There, you know, it's okay. That, that's the whole process. That somebody's got to be cut. That's the whole right, process here. Right, right. Uh, whose league are you in? What fantasy um, league are you in? I was actually Dolan? in. Dolan? Are you in Dolan's no. league? <laughs> was okay. actually, I was actually in two different leagues, but the, I'm actually not playing this year. What happened? You just. Um, you, no, I've been. I, I love fantasy football. I just. I just. I'm uncomfortable with the. the the Washington team name and I just no kidding I just don't want to it just it's uncomfortable for me so it just it took all the fun out of it for me really yeah so, so you just won't even play fantasy football because mm -hmm. of that but I'm still a huge Rams fan and a Chargers fan because they're both here in LA um, but Todd Gurley is is uh, he's a Laker fan and he's sat with me a couple times yeah, for we got games. A, there's, we just put the picture up yeah, right there at I Jeannie Buss. I love that kid. He is. <laughs> he's he's old school kid. too. The, yeah. The Todd father right there. He's he's a winner for the Rams. Yeah, yeah no doubt about that. Uh, okay, Jeannie, thank you for coming on. Thank you. You appreciate it. Thank See, you. See, you're just down the road. This is where we're we're just up the road from you. I'll be knocking on your door. Please, a anytime. Lot. Hey, by the way, it works both ways. We might okay. be knocking on yours as well. Okay. Uh, thank thanks you. for coming on. Greatly appreciate it. And by the way, uh, the official Lakers podcast, <gasps> hosted by my wife. Susie can be gotten Schuster, every, I know yes. she, every single week. It's going to be great. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun building a great. That's pretty cool yeah. that you. It's the first official podcast of any team in the in the association. Right, and I love that um, a woman owned run team is. We've got a, a woman running our podcast. Well, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> For podcast one, I don't know if Norm Pattis would say she's running it. Well, that's right. I want to make sure because on the other side, you put Norm next to the uh, next to the home bench that's and right. Jackson uh, on the other side uh, next to the visiting bench. Uh, okay, thanks very much. Next time, James Dolan buys you dinner. Yes. Would you give me a call so I can, you know, tell him a couple of thoughts on his ownership <laughs> skills with the Knicks? Would you mind doing that? Jim Dolan is a good guy. Okay. I love that guy. Okay. okay. They're all sticking together. <laughs> You're going to be liking Jim by the end of this. It's <laughs> Great to see you here, Jeannie. You. you got Jeannie Buss here on The Rich Eisen Show. Ty Law in studio next hour. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.